following the uproar and also concerning the cyber security levy complaints and also ultimatum given by Syria for the federal government to go back on the issue of the 0.5 percent that have been placed on cyber security levy house of rep have actually told the CBN that they should halt on that until further notice good morning and welcome to the dailies where we keep you up to date on what's happening on the papers this morning I am Sarah Elisha Dasham, and I will be doing the program alongside Rachel Tanzi. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? Great. How is the weather? Weather is just okay. Because I seem to be going down on the cold, so it seems my voice is kind of shaky. But we'll do our best yes. and then prepare for the weekend as well. Yes. All right. Let's go straight into the paper, starting with the Friday Leadership Newspaper. The big story on the paper, reverse crisis. Fubara lawmakers take fight to assembly quarters. Governor Hint's estate may need renovation. pro wk lawmakers accuse Fubara of another demolition plot. Details can be found on page 7. Tenebu flags off Funtua inland dry port. Details can be found on page 7. On strikes, implement agreement with ASU orders. Reps tell federal government. Trending federal government gives POS operators two months to register. On numbers, CBN direct charging of cyber security levy. You can find details on page two. National Assembly divided over cyber security levy. You can find details on page seven. And then we have a picture story where we can see um, the GT holding company place third annual meeting. That is the annual general meeting. Prince Harry Meghan arrived in Nigeria today. Details can be found on page 8, and that's all the news on Leadership Newspaper. On Daily Sun Newspaper, we will reveal upwards 615,000 minimum wage if inflation bites harder. NLC President Ajero is saying that with the rider says hardship in Nigeria worsening. You can find more details of that on page 25. Also, the big story here says convicted drug barons to get death sentence. A Senate approved capital punishment for that crime. You can find detail of that on page four. Reps probe Lagos Calabar Highway Contract Foreign Affairs Ministry moved to recover 28 trillion naira lost revenue with detail on page 26. Cyber security levy split the National Assembly, Senate, House takes divergent position so you can find more detail why the refs are saying that it should be take over now it seems there seems to be a division on that well we keep our fingers crossed to see what the end come will be and on reverse crisis wubara urges um to nibu to call wiki to order pdp vows not to tolerate further intimidation of governor fubara recognizes the new speaker so you can find detail of that on page six Lawmakers summon NDPHC MD over abandoned 252 megawatts power plant in Bayelsa State. Prince Harry and wife arrived in Nigeria today to visit wounded soldiers and others. More detail found on page 7. 4.135 billion naira fraud excavation minister Sirika, daughter, son in law, doc arranged get. 400 million naira bill you can find detail on page five also downside we have headsmen kill agro rangers commandant in benue you can find detail of that on page four we have two picture stories you can do well to grab the paper and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you on nigerian tribune 37 years after Oolo was named still remembered for good in Nigeria. A statement from Bishop Fape, you can find details on page 3. Cybersecurity levy halt implementation now reps tell CBN. is a huge burden on Nigerians coming from NEF. Senate Reps Committee Chairman address gray areas. Reps launch probe into procurement process in Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. Insist relevant documents must be sent to National Assembly for approval. Equity State Cavista holding signed multi billion naira memorandum of understanding to boost cassava farming. ASU rejects wage award insists on negotiated salary for members. 
Fubara moves against pro wiki lawmakers inspect assembly complex for renovation. You can find details on page 25. Senate approves death penalty for hard drug importers and dealers. Edo Cod admits BTC in suit challenging Oba Benin's right to suspend energies. You can find details on page 3. A state government washes hands off matter. 100 priest, priestesses, palace chief storm cord in solidarity with Oba. You can find details on page 3. That's all news on Nigerian Tribune. Richard, I think it's high time Senate actually approved the state penalty. I mean, you could actually tell that the number of people running mad on our streets are increasing yeah, by the day, yes. and it's not because of any other thing, but because of drugs intake. You know that NDLA are trying their best as much as possible. I mean, if you're very vigilant, you know that you see them around areas, you see them on forest bushes just trying to cool me to be sure that there's nobody taking drugs in like at the day but i think for them to even go down to the fact that those who are importing it and as well as those who are exporting it the senate have approved death penalty i think i'm totally in support of that maybe after we see two or three people being hanged to death uh -huh. then eventually we begin to see that the people who are sponsoring this because believe you me rachel Isha may see a picture of the people who who brought this in I can't help but say, you know what, these people are not working alone. They're not. They, have, they definitely have top people who are actually sponsoring them. But these people are faceless, so they have foot soldiers that do the work for them. So I'm hoping that with this, we'll be able to see a society that will be free of drugs in every angle. I think this is the desire of everybody. We know that it, it got to a point that even now that had to join hands in this because of setting cough syrup were actually being used as well. And then we saw that there are certain cough syrup that have been banned because of its intake and how it's very, very dangerous to the health. So I'm happy and I'm totally in support of this. I hope to see more intelligent implementation coming from the Senate, not some very unsensitive and senseless decision. And sometimes you just can't help but wonder yeah. if it's our lawmakers that are making this decision. So I think I am excited with this particular step being taken by the Senate on the issue of drugs. Yes, Ella, and I hope when you're talking about the baron, they're not just um, targeting the middleman. I want to see them busting the cartels and the syndicate. Like, let them go to the top of the chain, the very, very top. If they can do that and achieve that, then that is when, I mean, they will deserve a standing ovation, and we know that they mean business, mm. because it's, it's a matter of supply, and if you don't cut a chain of supply, just the foot soldiers is not enough, as you have said it. We need to see the root being cut off. We know the hierarchy. We know, and the sad part is that there are people that are being protected by the government, even when it comes to this drug um, um, trafficking and all of that. And so that we, we can only talk about those who are on the street. What about those that have died as a result of substance abuse? Because its availability is there. And we also have to work on the demand, Sele. The demand is increasing. And I keep saying where there's demand, there's supply. We also have to work on that. It's a joint, it's, it's, it's a joint force work. I, I see it down to the community. We've talked about that. And then to the top. So I just hope that they don't just go for the middle men. This sentence, when, when you are looking for who to make an example with, I hope they go for the top of the top, yeah, sure. if there's any word like that. And then we can say, you know what, we are making headway. Not like if you go for the middle man, it's not something it is. But I'm looking for that kind of quality of success in taking um, drug down and then this penalty on um, people that are found wanting. Very true, Rachel. Let's take a look at the next paper which is the metric newspaper. And here we are having cybersecurity Navy, NESG kicks, false timing, says Nigerians already battling high food prices. You can find detail of that in the paper. Tenebo names Woke and then um, Rike, Ally, MD, Ogun, Osho River, Basic Development Authority. And MFLA gate CBN officials demand $600,000 bribe to process payment of executive and contract weakness. You can have more detail of that on page 18. The big story is on reverse crisis where we have Fubara reverse assembly trade tackles. We have a new speaker. I went to see him for myself coming from Fubara. And we have Clark insists Omar Woodley remains speaker of reverse assembly. 
and uh, go bombs. Fubara says he's not interested in making peace with Nikki. You can find more detail of that in the paper. IMF praises Tinubu Nomi's comments federal government on tax monetary policy. You can find what uh, IMF is saying concerning some of the economic policy that the president has made. And we have fresh crisis, Lagos, um, rocks, Lagos, Calabar, Costa Highway, as reps launch probe into the procurement process. And I think it's high time that the lawmakers step into this because this whole Lagos, Calabar, Costa Highway is beginning to take another turn that we do not understand. So our fingers are crossed. I don't see how this whole story will unfold. Alleged 2.7 billion Naira fraud, Sirica daughter arranged plead not guilty, get bill you can find more in the paper also we have the speech story on the front page concerning rebuilding you can do well to grab the paper in more detail of the story that is of interest to you and that's all on metrics newspaper on new telegraph newspaper the big story electricity tariff labor demands reversal of Reversal to 65 Naira kilowatt per hour issue 3 day ultimatum accuses NERC of bias. ASU rejects wage award, insists on negotiated salary. Reps urge federal government to implement all pacts with ASU and NASU. Details can be found on page 3, 6, and 31. IMF warns federal government against diluting CBN's autonomy. U.S. lawmakers seek probe into Nigeria's $1.3 billion oil field scandal. Details can be found on page 29. Ex-aviation minister, daughter, son-in-law, plead not guilty, get $300 million naira bail. Federal government fortifying custodial centers against jailbreaker, says Tunji Ojo. Doctors battle to save Babangida wife as brother dies in auto crash. Details can be found on page 31. Olufo will say chairs first bank as Odukale retires after 12 years tenure. Details can be found on page 25. Why Nigeria may not fully benefit from domestic refining by NESG. So a report from NESG why we might not benefit domestic um, refining. You might find the details on page 29. Those who peddle fake news against Ohaneze leadership will be ostracized. You can find details on page 28. Cut to hear Bianca's son notice against Ojuku Transport Limited May 20th. You can find details on page 7. Reps to probe Lagos Calabar Highway contract. Details can be found on page 2, 6, and 30. Senate approves death penalty for drug producers and traffickers. We have a study that says vegan, vegetarian diets tie to quality sleep. So you might want to <laughs> become vegan or a vegetarian or just add more vegetables to your meals. You can find details on page 26, and that's all the news on New Telegraph newspaper. On the Guardian newspaper, we are having the story here that says how real estate firms, agency fleets, prospective property buyers and tenants is a big story you can find on page four and five. One reportedly killed, several injured in fresh Okwama violence. We will recall yesterday the military said that they have withdrawn from Okwama community, but we're seeing that one was reportedly killed. You can find more detail of what happened in the paper. 45-year-old cleric defiles three minors in Quara, blames the devil, and I think it's high time they begin to add another punishment for people who are involved in all of this. Even though there is, but I think they need to make the punishment more severe. That's on human angle. You can find that on page 8. IMF projects 24% inflation rate for Nigeria by the year, um, year end. That's on business. Senate okays death sentence for makers of illicit drugs. Also, we are having House of Reps direct CBN to halt implementation of the 0.5% levy on e-transaction. Kaduna to relocate 359 schools over insecurity data found in the paper. We have the picture story during the uh, GT Holdings Company third annual meeting. You can find more detail of that. And again, we are still seeing the transaction exempted from cyber security levy in the outside of the paper more detail of what that is and that's all on the garden newspaper
on the punch, government under pressure to stop cybersecurity levy. 2.7 billion naira fraud court imposes travel ban on Sirika and daughter. Citizen slam IGP for detaining journalists beyond 48 hours. Details can be found on page 45. Tinubu Abiodun Omosun orders hail Awujali at 90. The big story, Coastal Highway probe, reps to Sumon Edun Mahi AGF. Works Ministry Defense Project House Panel gets four weeks to complete probe. Senate OK's death penalty for drug traffickers. First cut of foreign debt servicing GOP $1 billion. This is a report from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Details can be found on page 41. Reverse crisis, Fubara lawmakers lock hands again. Much sorrow as under-17 hero Babangida is buried. Details can be found on page 46. Bisman, Lagos police beaker over 7,000 Naira extortion allegation. Details can be found on page 4 and that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. Right, let's take a look at daily independent newspaper. Reps uh, probe controversial Lagos Calabar Costa Highway project. Once relevant documents sent to the National Assembly, more detail found in the paper. Also, the big story, Senate okay state penalty for drug traffickers and others. Why I paid for surprise visit to Rivers Assembly quarters coming from the governor of Fubara. SEC rules are new rules on insur insurance allotment of private coy security, unapproved insurance of securities to attract 10 million naira penalty. Telecom sector contribution to GDP hits 13.5%, rank in 33 trillion naira in 2023. Here we are having GT, CO shareholders OK $750 million capital raising 94.179 billion naira dividend. IGP charges police legal officer to protect citizens' right due process. Tinibu appoint Minister of State for Petroleum Resources upon as co-chair NCDMB. Um, you can find detail in the paper. Senate reps disagree on the new 0.5% cybersecurity levy. More detail in the paper. An alleged abuse of office, EFCC tenders document against ex-CBN Governor MFL. You can find that on page 7. And we have a picture story. You can do well to read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On the Daily Times, ASU rejects wage award, insists on negotiated salary for members. Court admits BTC in suit challenging over of Benin's authority. Federal government recaptures more fleeing inmates, a statement from Tunji Ojo. You can find details on page two. On tax evasion, FCT, IRS, short school, hotel, and others. The big story on the paper, halt implementation of cybersecurity levy, House of Rep or the CBN. Directs Apex Bank to withdraw ambiguous circular in existence. LCCI commends, commends loots reps over directives to Apex Bank. NESG false timing of cybersecurity levy says Nigerians battling high food prices. NLC to NERC, reverse electricity tariff high or phase resistance. Vows to occupy commission offices, GENCOS disclosed nationwide by May 13. Says NERC has become tacit collaborator in crafting operative pricing regime against Nigerians. You can start with the details on the front page and continue on page two. Nigeria's economic overhaul, IMF back CBN tight monetary policy, FX rate flexibility, and others. You can find details on page 14. And then we have a picture story where we can see Reverend Michael Olusha um, together with all those family at his 37 memorial celebration. This happened yesterday in Ogun State, and that's all the news on the Daily Times newspaper. Right, let's take a look at another paper, which is the Nigerian News Direct. Despite impact of devaluation, ETA records growth in mobile money service. You can find that on page 8. The legacy I will leave behind as governor coming from Mark and Lee, he's revealing, and I hope other, doc, uh, other governors as well have things that they will be leaving behind. 
Refs worry over abuse of cybercrime levy halt the implementation. New bill passed by the Senate imposed death penalty on drug traffickers. GTCO targets $750 million in capital raising program. And we have federal government Cheng Lobobiri appoint co-chair of NCDMB board seek due process increase investment in gas projects. And we also have another story here. It's talking about housing deficit. 698 civil servants to become house owners coming from Lagos Commissioner. And I'm happy Lagos is working towards making sure civil servants have home. Mm -hmm. I know one of the challenge for civil servants, especially when you are retiring, when it comes to the issue of their housing, sometimes you're asked to bring in your mortgage of what you've made your savings over the 35 years of service for you to be able to get back your money because ideally that money was supposed to be used for you to get a house but we say that sometimes our pensioners even our civil servant rather retire without even having a house of their own mm -hmm. and here we're seeing that the commissioner is talking about this number of civil servants to be house owners and i hope i see other states taking the yeah, same lead so. whereby while you have civil servants working you're also making provision to make sure you know what while serving or after service, you should be able to have a home to call your own. Because certain deductions that are being made is from your money. Moreover, you're not, the government is not dashing, you work for it. So I'm hoping to see other states taking this initiative. I know that this is just a starting point for Lagos. More civil servants will be house owners. But I'm looking forward to seeing other states as well taking this initiative and making sure, you know what, we are actually interested in the welfare of our staff. So we also want them to be house owners. So we look forward to seeing the issue of this house deficit that's taking place, not just in Lagos, but in every other state as well. Yes, uh, we've talked about housing in the past. We've talked about how it's a big problem in the FCT. And we've talked about how we are looking forward to seeing um, the state government in every state and then the federal government making it a priority. Because um, we wouldn't have shanties, for example, if there were housing plans. And when you are making a housing plan, you capture every status um, level of your civilians. You capture the poorest of the poor. There should be economy um, housing facility for people to be able to be in it and then be able to pay according to their level. Of course, the size, the quality, the space will differ. But when you are making housing plans, it should be affordable. And for me, it starts at the federal level. Let's, let's look at the FCT, for example. Something needs to be done. I know how we kept on hammering. We say, you know what? Enough of ministers that think they are, they are, they are, they are, um, the, their top priority or the number one job of being an FCT minister is demolition. It's building also. It's creating an atmosphere for people to thrive. So can we start having that? And then it's a ripple effect. I know that when it comes to Lagos, you're setting the pace in everything. And it's almost like it's unfair to tell other states, look at what Lagos is doing because they're just far ahead. And so many states are very backward. Mm. But it doesn't matter if Lagos is able to do 698, start with 50. Start with 100. But you can start with 20. Sell it. Exactly. On the strength exactly. Of the state. Start from somewhere. Mm. Because whether we know we, whether we, we, we accept it or not, it's a fact out there. Shelter is important for every other mm. person. So I'm looking forward to seeing government intervention. And I'm looking from the federal level, from the state. And so I imagine if we had a local government that truly has this autonomy. You mm. can also point fingers, because that's one of the things we keep saying about local government having their autonomy, most especially to fund. It means you can point fingers at them and say, okay, you have this full access. It means your health sector is supposed to improve, your school education needs to improve. And then we can also say, okay, you also need to do something for housing mm. at your own level. So imagine if we can have that at every level. It's, it's going to be important. We, we can't stop talking about it. There's so much that Nigerians need, and we just want to see a government that wants to start from somewhere, no matter how mm. little it is. Richard, you know, while you were talking, I just couldn't help, but you remember, was it last year when we saw Dave Umahi closing the, the gates to the Ministry of Works in Lagos yes. because certain workers were late. Late, exactly. And then you, you remember some of the workers, the reasons they gave were because they where they were leaving, exactly. to 
although the office was quite fun, and we know the way holdups can be in yeah. Lagos and all that. So imagine having this affordable housing closer. Close I mean, we will not have issues of such things happening. So sure. we look forward to seeing more steps being taken in. Well, before we continue for the Without a Paper analysis, we'd love to take a break. Quite a lot to say. What did you feel? What's your own view concerning the... Um, the crisis in River State and also as well as um, what reps are saying. They are asking CBN to halt, but it seems that there is kind of a rift whether or not who Nigerians will have to pay this cyber security label. So we would love to also hear your own opinion about that. So please stay tuned with us. When we come back, we will continue with the paper analysis. Democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Join me every Friday, 7 p.m. on National Talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around Nigeria, as well as an opportunity to add your voice. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, it's still the ladies. We have been looking at a number of stories on the paper. We're seeing that reps are also going to probe the issue of the Lagos Calabar Costa Highway. It seems to be taking a different tone altogether. And then also we are seeing the issue of the um, cybersecurity levy where the reps are saying, you know what, let's just put this on a halt and then try to probe it and see what really is happening. Because we will remember, Serap gave the federal government about 48 hours to go back on it. And then also, we're also seeing a number of things. Even um, Labour is talking about the issue of the electricity tariff hike, which they're also giving the, you know, the electricity commission deadline to actually go back on that as well. So we would love to hear your own opinions and your views concerning any of the students that is of interest to you. I still have Rachel with me on set. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome, sir. All right, let's go to the paper review. On Vanguard newspaper, Senate OK's death penalty for manufacturers of dangerous drugs. Cash transfer scheme raised household savings but had little other impact coming from World Bank. Deporting 317 ocean indigents from Lagos, illegal statement from Falana details can be found on page 10. Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project not okay by National Assembly procurement for probe. This is coming from reps, ask ministers of works, finance, justice, AGF to send all guarantees credit enhance, enha en enhancement instrument to the National Assembly. Says project didn't get National Assembly approval. Details can be found on page five. Senate reps disagree on implementation of cybersecurity levy. Board arms of National Assembly passed levy into law after public hearing. A statement from Senate says levy not punitive, but aimed at protecting national security and economy details can be found on page 32. 2.7 billion naira fraud ex aviation minister Sirika daughter ducked get 100 million naira bill details can be found on page 8. On Edo Guba crack in Labour Party as youth leader declares dissolution of ESCO details can be found on page 22. 
IMF cautions federal government against CBN Act amendment. Federal government telecoms operators disagree on tariff hike. Details can be found on page 9. There is an Awela can file column on page 17 and also a picture showing at GTCO's third AGM. And that's all the news on Vanguard newspaper. On Nation newspaper, Rivers House reaffirms legitimacy as Fubara backs three loyal lawmakers. Sirika orders get 100 million naira bill. Chibot girl back with three kids after 10 years. More of these girls are coming in. And I wonder what plan does the government have to bring these girls back? And uh, is there any other thing to work on trauma? And then many other things where well, I hope to hear more from the government. Senate House differ on the cyber levy. You can find that story on page four. And we have NLC justify the 615,000 naira demand, which I remember Richard mentioned. There was a breakdown talking about utility, talking yeah. about inflation, talking about food, transportation, school fees, and many other things. And really looking at all of these, you, you, you can help but you know, say, okay, you know what? Yes, we agree why you said the 615,000 naira. But then, remember yesterday, Governor Sule saying that they are not going to fight it. Whatever amount that the committee is able to come up with, governors are not going to fight it. They will try as much as possible. But let's not forget that not every state hands are equal. There are some states that have mega revenues that are coming in, and there are others that virtually nothing is coming in. No wonder when the fair allocation comes in, we know how it's being shared. But nevertheless, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, Rachel, May will soon be over. And I remember that was the deadline that yes. Labour gave to the federal government, that you know what, by May ending, we want to have it. Initially, it's supposed to be April, but I wonder why we took it to May. But then let's just see what the justification, if the federal government will be on the side of Labour concerning justifying this amount of money as the minimum wage. We, we hope so, Stella, because um, well, this is more of a leading wage, this 615, that is breaking down every other thing for households and all of that. And then we remember the committee saying that they are not even sure they will come to a decision in May. And this is something that the decision should have been done in March, implemented in April, started of the second quarter of the year 2024, and nothing like that happened. And so far, nothing is being said. So yes, May is going to go without an implementation yet. Will they come to a decision? Probably yes. But let's not forget that even when they come to a conclusion, it has to pass the Senate. It has to be passed, the first, second reading, it has to be approved for it to be implemented. So there's still more process on the way for it to go because it's not like the committee will just come out. State governors, of course, they are both part of the tripartite um, committee and all of that, they are there. The question is, what is keeping them this long? Because there have to be an agreement. And in as much as from the outside, we can see it as an easy decision to be made it's not that easy because this is what NLC is demanding this is living wage wanting it to be the minimum mm -hmm. wage the question is can the Nigerian government give this looking at our deficit our debt profile and all of that as a living wage for it to be minimum while we have another saying you know what let's focus on minimum wage can we get the minimum wage first before we talk about living wage Let's be done with that one. So w if this kind of division also can slow down decisions, whether we like it or not. As much as I would want for Nigerians to have this minimum wage, living wage, and all of that is important. But I'm also of the side that can we get the minimum wage first? Mm. Then we can talk living wage. Let, because it needs to be implemented. Nobody's finding anything easy, seller so far. Let's talk minimum wage and let governors come to a point that say, you know what, this is a, a minimum wage that we can implement immediately. And this time around, unlike how 30,000 was treated, that it was just left for governors whether or not, regardless of your backlog in payments, please implement this minimum wage because the country is not getting easy for anybody. So I would just want us to focus on minimum wage for now. Let's get that one first. One thing after another, we are, make, we are moving. But if there's so much division on this, 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 that it slows down the process, in my opinion, let's get minimum wage. Then we can now 
further talk about living wages and then the NLC of course should find means mm. of making the government listen to them. Well the president promised both rich of minimum wage and that. living wage. I remember that was his promise during workers day. So let us see how that will turn out to be. Well that's all on the nation newspaper. On the Nigerian Observer the big story of Kwama boils again as one killed, three wounded in fresh communal clashes after exit of military. More hurdles for cybersecurity levy as reps suspend implementation. Say CBN cycler gives wrong impression on who pays the levy. You can find details on page two. Court case between brothers Edo government also being sued by Enegi says Nehikari. You can find details on page four. 1,336 killed, 29,554 displaced in plateau in three months, coming from Amnesty International. And the LEA Act amendment, Senate approved death penalty for drug offenses. Edo Obedience and the AIO2 project. You can find details on page 10, and that's all the news on the Nigerian Observer. Right, let's take a look at what the Business Day newspaper have, where we are seeing health tech startup beat local lending hurdles with overseas funding as health cap secures nearly $100 million. You can find more detail on what the healthcare is all about. Businesses pay 23% more in import duties on volatile Naira. Credit to government drops to one year low despite higher interest rate. And also here we're having MCN Airtel FX induced 511 billion Nera loss max Stella first quarter performance. You can find more detail of that. We have a feature story becoming a start topper of the year. You can do up to have a closer look and see what that is all about. And that's all on Business Day newspaper. On Punch Pod Extra, the big story, Alex Akende exclusive. Hong Kong fans love me because I always give my best and I am so happy to represent Hong Kong. They know who you are and they always shout in your name. My transition from football to kids making. Uh, you can find details on page six. Eagles 2022 World Cup no show still hunting panic and then you can find details on page seven. Europa final brothers at war as Lukman fires Atlanta to final against Boniface Teller's Leverkusen. You can find details inside the paper. A UK Yusuf suffer Belgian Cup heartbreak. Details can be found on page seven. Final whistle on the 17th World Cup winner Babangida Berry today. New Alamance brutal Peter UCL Howler. You can find details on page eight. Pep Ateta lead EPL managers award contenders. Bully drops hints on Pochettino's future. Giorgino extends Arsenal contract. Details can be found on page four. Nike didn't treat us well, says AFN chief Okowa. How I beat Kadri in Saudi, coming from Korea's Cho. AK praises teammates for ball form. You can find details on page two, and that's all the news on Point Sports Extra. Well, I think that's how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you, Rachel. For You're welcome, me. And thank you also to our faithful followers and our supporters for always being there to watch the daily. Also, we look forward again to meeting you next week to have a great weekend ahead.